Welcome back. It's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everyone. I wanted to do something for Christmas that was a little bit different to what I normally do. Um, I thought, what can I kind of put out there that's going to be helpful to people? Um, that's something maybe a bit out of my uh, norm and the channel's norm. And I thought a little bit about uh, doing something on the truth about health and fitness. Uh, in terms of the industry of health and fitness and how that comes across on social media uh, because it's something that really bugs me and because I'm not in the uh, industry as it were I don't make any money out of uh, this kind of stuff uh, I figured I'm in a pretty good position to put something out there from a point of honesty and without having any financial uh, backing in that you know because there's a lot of people putting information out there because they run a fitness channel so they're trying to make money for a fitness channel and generally they've got some supplements that they're offering or they're offering some sort of training course or uh, you know so something along those lines they're a personal trainer and it gets real hard to disseminate what's useful in that realm and what's a lie and what is achievable and what's good. So I'll throw a few pictures up while I'm doing this. A bit of background. Um, I was, when I was young, you know, I was born with not great genetics. When I was young, I was overweight, so I wasn't a genetically gifted person at all. And then I got pretty heavily into sport and uh, weight training and a bit of fight training when I was in my very late teens, early 20s onward. And I'll throw a couple of pictures up. I got in pretty good shape back then and I was competing um, as a power lifter. I had some pretty good numbers. I was pulling like 300 kilo deadlifts, um, squatting around the same, benching around 180s, so decent numbers. And I was also doing a bit of uh, MMA and stuff like that, not to any serious level, but I was in good shape and I was reasonably fit. Um, and I'd gone from being very, very fat, you know, at my fattest when I was young, I was a size 38 inch waist and I just thought that's how you're born. You know, some people are unlucky. I would try and do diets and, uh, you know, fad diets and all this kind of thing. Uh, but I never was able to achieve anything until I changed my mindset a little bit. Then fast forward uh, a few years ago, uh, doing some sport, I got injured, um, injured my back pretty badly. I actually compressed uh, two discs in my spine, I think it was the C3, C4 type area, and then another one lower down in the uh, lumbar area. And that was just from crazy, crazy um, weights. It was mainly from squatting, to be honest. And I actually, uh, the C3, C4 was just from um, uh, squatting ridiculous heavy weights. So I stopped training. I lost a lot of strength. Um, it, because of the injury, it was compressing on nerves. So I couldn't even lift this arm up like this. It was basically, I went from benching 180 overnight to, you know, I couldn't even lift five kilos, I was struggling to lift the, the kettle. So I was getting pretty frustrated and I just quit training. And at that point I thought, well, you know, I'm getting older. This is what happens when you get older. I'm just gonna pack it all in and kind of go back to, you know, eating some rubbish and just treating myself. And I kind of conned myself into thinking that, that that's what happens, you know, I'm, I'm in my late 40s, I'm 47 now. So slowly got fatter and that time went on and on and it ended up, you know, being several years of basically um, pretty sedentary lifestyle, eating not outrageously, but eating not the right foods most of the time. So, you know, the stuff that was convenient, things that you can buy from... Um, the food store and you just heat up in the oven so I wasn't like stuff in my face but I was certainly um, consuming the wrong types of food and then probably the worst part of the diet was um, beer so I love IPA and I was really into you know d decent quality IPAs so I'd have you know one or two of those and 
that would lead to oh you know let's eat something else because you have a few beers and then you're um, wanting to eat a pizza or some cheese and crackers or whatever so look, it's all good fun but um, bottom line is I ballooned back up to a 40 inch waist I was probably the most unfit I've ever been and at that point um, you know I was I was not happy with myself I was not happy what I saw in the mirror and I actually had a dream one night that I was uh, really good and back in shape and in this dream I was in the gym training really hard doing really well and I was so pleased with myself and then I woke up and I remember you know still sort of feeling like yeah I'm you know I'm in real good shape and then I kind of looked down and I was like ah you know that was a dream and uh, that hit me pretty hard you know and I, I just thought what am I doing with myself why am I um, kidding myself because unlike a lot of people I knew what I needed to do and what I could do to get into shape and my problem was that I was choosing not to do it so it was my um, motivation and my mindset that I needed to change so I had the advantage over a lot of people I'd done the um, the hard work uh, many years ago learning all the the mistakes and believe me I went through a lot of them I ran through a lot of supplements um, I tried all kinds of different diets so I've been there got the t-shirt as far as you know health and fitness industry is concerned I've been manipulated and lied to so I just wanted to put across the things I found the things I found that work um, so in short from that 40 inch waist um, this was January 21 no January 22 so it was a, it was about a year ago just coming up so in January 22 I came back from SHOT Show over in Vegas where I'd obviously uh, partaken in a few beers and quite a lot of pizza and stuff and I came back from that and thought right I'm not gonna do that until next January when I go to SHOT again I'm gonna start changing my lifestyle so I told a few people around me and I told some people I trusted and a few people I knew at work that I got on really well with and I said look you know I'm changing my lifestyle this is how it's going to be and in six months time by the by the summer by late summer I will have visible abs and they were like laughing sure buddy you know that sounds like an advert there's no way you know you're 47 you're not gonna have visible abs and etc etc and I said, yeah, I promise you I will. And I did that for a specific reason. I told people because if you just only tell yourself, that's not much motivation. You know, I'm the kind of person that I like to prove people wrong. And I know if I make some uh, statement that appears outrageous, like the ab statement, then most people are going to be like, nah, this, you know, this guy's uh, full of it. And they're going to call me out. And then that gives me something to work towards you know because I like to uh, I like to show people that um, I can do things when they think I can't so I made that statement and I went from a 40 inch waist down to now a 30 inch waist so I've lost 10 inches around the waist um, I'm down from you know a ridiculous amount of body fat to probably about 12 percent now uh, like I say visible abs some vascularity and I'm back in decent fitting clothes uh, I'll try and do a, a stand up and a spin round I'm not going to start taking my clothes off and whatever um, I'm too old for that sort of stuff but um, you know I, I find that kind of cringe but um, my aim was to feel good about myself again to be able to look in the mirror and be really happy with what I saw to be able to be fit um, because I work in the defense industry I'm a, I'm a pro shooter so I actually found it was a bit of a joke you know I was going to shooting ranges and demoing stuff to guys that their whole lifestyle and their job and everything they do is about you know being a, a tool being um, a real uh, weapon and, and, and getting on it and being healthy and fit and able and competent to do all the stuff that we're talking about in, in terms of like a tactical application and although I'm not um, actually doing I'm not an operator I'm not doing tactical application but I could kind of see those guys were like huh you know like I had to win them over 
by um, talking about ballistics and stuff and after a while they'll be like yeah this guy knows some stuff about ballistics so maybe we'll listen to him um, where actually it's a great benefit um, for me to to look in shape and to be in shape so that when I'm running around the range and I come back I'm not breathless and uh, sweaty and, and looking like an absolute hot mess uh, then those guys are uh, maybe going to take me a little more seriously and I think that's true for guys in general and maybe girls too I don't know but for guys in general you know it's not a nice thing but most guys will make a kind of uh, secret judgment about other men and if they see them as like physically competent and capable men they kind of assume that they're competent in other areas as well and if we see someone who is really out of shape and they're not looking after themselves unfortunately the subconscious kind of thought process there tends to lean towards yeah maybe they're lazy they're not you know they're not keeping their themselves um, competent in it in all areas so um, that's a real setback I think in terms of um, professionalism you know that um, I didn't want to be hamstrung like that I wanted uh, people to uh, to be able to take me seriously um, I don't care if people you know think I'm um, good looking or whatever or you know I'm too old for all that stuff maybe I did when I was younger and I was trying to impress girls and stuff but that wasn't the reason I was doing it I wanted to feel good and look in the mirror and feel good about myself but also I realized that there would be some uh, professional uh, benefits to that in, in that I would maybe be taken more seriously on, in the uh, professional world or even in a job interview if I was looking for a different job um, you know that people are going to make judgments again they shouldn't but the same like how you dress how you look how you present it all comes across and that, that's life people don't like it but there we go so uh, we'll go through a little bit about the routine um, I'll show you some stuff about the the meals routine is pretty simple and there's no magic to this it's basically weight training five times a week um, and that's split into body parts um, I'll stick the um, the type of uh, training the type of weight techniques down there's loads and loads of videos out there showing you how to do these techniques and if you're new to weight training I would suggest a personal trainer but with a caveat so this is one of the first lies about the industry you have to have a personal trainer all the time no you need a personal trainer to show you what to do in a gym for like three to four weeks after that they've lost all you know they, they can't provide you anything else except for being your motivation and at that point after three or four weeks you should be able to be your own motivation or you should be able to get a friend or, or you know train with someone at the gym or just train like I do I train best on my own because I can motivate myself by like getting in the zone and, and getting in the gym maybe putting some decent music on and just getting it done so I'm like five times in the in the gym per week and each of those times I'm in there high intensity on the weights but lifting to failure um, so we're doing that maybe um, for an hour to an hour 20 minutes max not two three hours you know that's mistake number one I used to make when I was younger I'd train for like three hours with like ridiculous amounts of training and all you're doing there is just shredding muscle tissue um, because your body once it's burnt up all the glycogen in the bloodstream, it just starts um, basically breaking down muscle tissue um, to use for energy, and then you're working against yourself. Now, why do you want muscle tissue? Look, you're not gonna turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. I hear these people go, oh yeah, but I'm not, I don't wanna get big. You're not gonna get big like Arnie, but you want decent muscle tissue for a variety of reasons. Reason number one, it helps with fat loss. Muscle tissue, actually uses a lot of energy in comparison to carrying body fat so you, you if you're using more calories just by having muscle tissue everything you eat um, is is being used for energy and your metabolic rate has, has increased so it's beneficial for fat loss and it's easier to keep fat off and to stop getting fat if you're carrying some muscle tissue 
Also, as we get older, muscle tissue is vital for things like preventing, um, you know, skeletal issues. So we start obviously having problems with our um, like arthritic issues and various different aches and pains. We all get them, you know, I, I get bad back still and it hurts. This has really helped my bad back because instead of all those bones kind of being like a scaffold in your body, they're now actually supported by decent muscle tissue around them and that's how it, they should be. They should be supported by muscle tissue. They're not there um, to be the, all the strength of the body. So it's massively beneficial from that point of view and it's beneficial for strength because in general you want to keep strength as long as possible. As we get older um, you don't want to be a kind of older person that isn't even strong enough to lift up the kettle or open a jar on your own and you end up needing to go in a care home if you keep decent strength up uh, even as you get older and it's all relative I'm not saying like you need to be benching like 100 kilos when you're like 80 I'm saying re retain as much strength as you can as you get older because it's going to be really important to your lifestyle so I've got the gym five times a week and that's split up you know so I split the body parts to give my body a rest in between times so I might do chest one day legs the next day then have a day off and then maybe do um, like shoulders so you get the point of view I'm not doing everything in one day and then waiting a day and doing everything another day because the muscle groups need a lot of time to heal if you do it right in the gym then you should be um, kind of paying for it in the next couple of days. And that leads me to another myth that bothers me is all these like uh, fitness influencers on social media and they're saying, oh, I eat um, you know, this vegan diet or I eat some green smoothies and I do this training, I get up at five in the morning and I do this training, I feel super energized every day. Oh my God, you won't believe it, how much energy you've got. Oh, I feel light as a feather. That is absolute nonsense. Like no one I know that trains real hard and eats like eats for training actually believes that or or has that. Um, that's like a marketing tool, you know, to get you to buy into their green smoothie or whatever it is they're selling. The fact is, if you train real hard, you wake up in the morning, you ache, and it's you're pretty tired, you know, physically tired. But there's a caveat you feel brilliant because even though you ache and you're physically tired you've achieved something and that ache is telling you um, yeah I've really hit the gym hard yesterday I'm getting somewhere because that ache is also telling you that your muscles are like micro torn and they're re uh, repairing themselves so that that's giving you that uh, confidence that what you did in the gym is actually beneficial and you feel pretty tired because you've been absolutely smashing it you know and, and your body's exhausted and you're burning a lot of calories so this whole idea that um, you know you're gonna wake up like with a ton of zip in your step and all that rubbish you're not you're gonna feel tired but you're gonna feel good about yourself and you know I've since I've got back in shape I've never um, got up earlier than I do now because I, I wake up at like five in the morning and I'm excited to see what happens in the day to come and I'm, I'm feeling good about it you know and I feel confident I'm happy to take the day on so yes I'm still tired I'm physically tired but I feel awesome and that is whether that's what these guys mean but that is worth the trade-off you know I would sacrifice feeling a bit physically tired to feel mentally brilliant and really you know ready to engage the day way better than what I would the other way around where I feel rubbish about myself lacking self-confidence you know worried about the day I remember like when I was really overweight you know I'd put off getting up all day until the, the last minute before I had to get up for work and then I you know give myself 10 minutes to get ready and just zip through the getting ready process and then out the door and now I actually get up real early you know enjoy uh, a healthy breakfast have a really decent cup of uh, coffee that you know grind my own coffee make a really decent cup of coffee sit down 
have a look at the day's news, get the day planned, get some uh, stuff down on paper that I, I'm going to do for the day and I feel awesome about it. So it's definitely, definitely worth the trade-off, but don't ever believe people that say that you're going to be like jumping up with a, um, you know, some amazing en physical energy. That is, that's not a thing. Um, the other lies that their influences will tell you or some of the PTs that are selling stuff is that there's supplements out there that you can eat whatever you like and then you can take this supplement and you're going to lose weight. No, there isn't. The supplements that are out there that work are vitamins and minerals and you can get all those supplements from a decent quality diet. The only supplements I take are um, like protein based supplements. So if I have porridge in the morning, I add a scoop of whey protein to that because porridge on its own isn't a fantastic protein source. So I add a scoop of whey just to boost the protein profile of that and it makes the porridge taste absolutely awesome. So I have like a banana cinnamon whey in there and it tastes amazing. I actually really look forward to um, having a porridge in the morning and that, that's a big difference. One of the things I noticed was like I cheat once a week now. So on a Friday, I'll eat a cheat meal uh, and the rest of the week I'm eating my diet, which I'll go through in a second and I'll list it below as well. So on a Friday night, I'll have like a pizza and a dessert or something like that. And I'm looking forward to that and I'm really excited about it. On a Thursday night, I might go out shopping and, and buy it and I'm like, oh man, this is going to be amazing. You know, I never had that before. When I was eating unhealthily, every meal just blended into one another they were all unhealthy they were all treats but i didn't see them as such they had just become the the default you know i'd become like desensitized to decent uh cheat meals so i didn't really ever get joy out of them it's kind of like a drug addict you know the first hit um you, you get this great buzz off it and you think yeah that's amazing and then afterwards it just becomes the norm and the hits don't give you that anymore and it's the same with junk food man you're just um, cruising on this like plateau and you're never achieving the kind of uh, exciting um, taste sensation that you did maybe the first time and now I get that every Friday every Friday that meal tastes so amazing so I can I can thoroughly recommend it if you're a foodie and you love your food the best way to love your food is to limit your intake of junk food or let's call it not even junk but just food that's high in calories that you couldn't get away with eating all the time if you limit that to once a week man it tastes so awesome so it's worth doing from a, a culinary perspective so back onto the training other than the uh, the gym i'm then doing half an hour of cardio uh, every night on a stationary bike here you could do that at the gym as well and i do that real hard you might have seen my uh, garmin watch video so i use the data on that watch just to inspire me a little more to push that all the time so that actually shows um you know how hard i'm going what my cadence is on the bike and all that kind of thing so i'm, I'm always trying to push that a little more and i'm not getting stuck in a rut because Although you can burn body fat with pretty mild cardio, I, I'm 47 now, I also worry about heart disease, diabetes, cancer, all the things that we see in the news that are you know, concerning about health and I want to make sure I've got uh, every chance against those things. So what I'll do is um, hard cardio to get the heart working. So I want to bring the heart rate right up. So I'm coming up to about 160, 170 maybe and then slowly coming back down. So I'll keep that going for five or six minutes, then come down, bring the heart rate down to about 110, 120, and do that a couple of times during that half an hour ride. And I would add, if you've got um, heart problems or you don't know if you've got heart problems, definitely go and see a doctor and get checked out before you embark on any sort of crazy exercise regime because you will find out you've got heart problems when you start really pushing it on a, an exercise bike or something. That's why squash, if you look at some of the most dangerous sports, squash is one of the most dangerous sports based on the fact that a lot of people die on squash courts because they go there unprepared, they don't know that they've got a pre-existing heart condition, 
then they get competitive on a squash court, go absolutely nuts, and they end up having a heart attack on the squash court and dying. So don't be that person. Get your heart looked at first. We'll just get some blood work, and that will tell you, you know, how your heart's performing, do your blood pressure, stuff like that. So that's it exercise wise, that's not a huge amount and people always say, and like I was saying it as well, I don't have time to do that. You do, because do you post on Facebook every day for like half an hour to an hour? Yeah, you probably do. Do you sit around after work, you know, looking at stuff on telly for half an hour, an hour? Yeah, you probably do. Are you, um, you know, laying around in bed uh, for no particular reason? Yeah, a lot of people are. Look, think about your day. There's probably loads of stuff you're doing in your day that isn't necessary, that's not benefiting you, and especially like the browsing through just junk on Facebook and whatever, or if you're not using YouTube to get actually legitimate quality content that you've asked for and you're just letting the feed chuck junk at you and watching like a 100 shorts in a row of whatever, Andrew Tate ranting or whatever, that is probably stuff that you can afford not to do in your life and arguably um, your life would be better to not do it. So, uh, by the way, i got no issues with uh, <laughs> people that make shorts. I make some shorts. Just want to throw that out there. But don't let that um, control like hours and hours of your day every day and then sit back and say that you haven't got time to go to the gym. You know, if you... I watch some shorts, but I get my gym done first. Then I come back and then I sit there and opiate myself with uh, with YouTube junk. So once we've got all that dealt with, um, the big change, like that's pretty easy. The big difficult one is the diet and this is the one that people always get wrong. So th the other lies in the industry are about the diet. That there's all kinds of like Weight Watchers programs out there and stuff like that and points based things and oh I can have so many sins a day and like forget all that sin rubbish and it, that's those people that go to those things yo-yo so they they lose some weight they do quite well they put weight back on they lose some weight they do quite well those things exist to make money they're run by huge huge corporations that are rich beyond belief and they're not there as charities they're not there doing you a real big favor they're not your friends There'll be nice people at them, but the business itself isn't your friend. It's a money-making business. And they make business by keeping you going there. You know, you should be able to hit your goals in like six months to a year, max. I went from absolute bloater to, you know, visible abs, 30-inch waist in six months. And you should be able to do that and keep the weight off afterwards. If you're not doing that, if you've been at Weight Watchers for a year and in the end you've lost like, you know, six pounds or whatever, there's a problem there. You're paying them for a service and they haven't come through for you and their answer will be just stick with it, you'll get there in the end. And there's people that I see that, you know, they go there year upon year upon year and they become institutionalised and they, it actually sells them the um the lie that we're born like that and they're never going to really change and they're only going to be able to lose a few pounds and they should just be happy with that wrong you can lose whatever you like you can get in really good shape if if you were to give me someone from that weight watchers group and i could like um sort of hypnotize them and they did everything i told them to do in terms of training and diet they i could get them into like 12 sub 12 percent visible ripped awesome shape even if they started out looking terrible not a problem and that's not me boasting i don't make money out of this i got no skin in the game i'm not gonna do you know personal training for people so i'm not interested i'm not interested in making money out of this i just want to get the truth out there because i'm sick to death of seeing all the the rubbish that gets posted and I think it's important, you know, as a, a middle-aged guy, um, there's a lot of people out there, middle-aged men and women, that will think that they are kind of over the hill and that they can't achieve fitness goals. You can achieve fitness goals. So in terms of diet, I have um, 50 grams of oats in the morning and then I mix that up. 
I have, um, like I said, a scoop of whey in there, um, a little, like a handful of dried fruit. I have like uh, three Brazil nuts and three walnuts. Uh, that's important because there's several medical studies that show that eating those nuts, uh, there's something in them. Uh, they think maybe uh, high selenium content along with some other micronutrients that uh, in controlled groups they found that people lost more body fat even if they were consuming those nuts and it was putting them on a slightly higher calorie than the control group so i have those nuts unsalted just you know raw nuts then the porridge with the dried fruit and the whey um, i mix that with water i don't have milk uh, i just you don't need to have milk so get out of that habit milk is you know it's, it's okay for a treat but um, it's just unnecessary calories that aren't doing you any favours in terms of as an additive. Then I'll have three meals in the day um, spaced around three hours apart. So they will be something along the lines of 80 grams of lean meat along with some chopped up uh, green salad leaves. I normally get like a herb salad or something like that. Don't just get lettuce because lettuce is mostly water and it's very low in its uh, vitamin and mineral content. You know, get a, a mixed leaf like herb salad would be the best. Things like rocket and stuff like that because we want to make sure we're getting as many different uh, nutrients as possible. And it's a variety of nutrients that you want. You know, people talk about uh, another myth. Oh, this superfood is the answer. You know, if you eat blueberries, you're never going to get cancer or whatever it is that's rubbish they are superfoods but what you need is a diet with loads of superfoods in it all superfoods not one not eat junk and then eat a punnet of blueberries every day or you know eat only chia seeds or whatever it is eat a variety of superfoods and then you're going to get somewhere and that a lot of them um, when they become superfoods the price goes up so you know you don't want to be eating like punnets and punnets of stuff all you're going to end up doing is um, needing a toilet really bad and basically the punnet will evacuate your body real quick if you overeat that stuff. And some of it can even be unhealthy. You know, antioxidants are good, but you can have too much of that. Fiber's good, but you can have too much fiber. And if you have too much fiber, you're actually um, restricting your uh, body from digestion because it's just going to expel everything at three times the rate and you're not going to get any decent digestion. So I have three of those lean meat, salad. Um, I normally add a little bit of kimchi. Uh, for those that don't know, that's like a fermented vegetable. You can uh, like um, carrot and uh, uh, fermented cabbage. Uh, sauerkraut is um, also a good option. Uh, if you don't like those things, fine. I add them in there because it's really good for your, your gut biome. And then it just tastes nice as well. Mix that around. Then I add uh, about a tablespoon of olive oil which is high in fat but if you look at all the studies in Mediterranean diets they have very low rates of heart disease and part of that is thought to be because they consume a lot of olive oil and it's uh, olive oil that hasn't been um, cooked so it hasn't been denatured and that can help with your cholesterol levels uh, and it helps in general uh, with with bodily function so not all fats are bad and there's another myth x food is bad you know carbohydrates are bad or proteins bad or fat is bad we should have seen by now that all these the way the diets go with the government you know the government pro pressed in the 70s like don't have any fat at all animal fats bad uh, and you should eat cereal products you know and they were like pushing stuff like Weetabix and stuff well that stuff is junk you know we now know that all those cereal products are absolutely terrible for you they're just powdered carbs that have been pressed into shapes and uh you know if, if there was any um one evil food or bad food it's processing so i aim to eat a diet that's mainly uh, you know 98 percent food that i have to cook and prepare myself from fresh produce if it's come out of a packet and it's processed as all hell, like your breakfast cereals and stuff, and even things like rice cakes, which I see people eating on diets, those rice cakes are not good for you. You know, they're shooting your insulin levels sky high. 
Um, they're just processed puffed up rice. They're basically akin to eating white bread or sugar or something like that. They're really low in fat, yes, but beware, they are super high in carbs and those carbs are fast acting carbs. The kind of carbs that you want to be consuming are things like your porridge, which is the set, it's a carb, but your stomach is going to take a long time to break that um, whole oats down. So even with your porridge, buy whole oats. Don't be buying some powdered porridge rubbish that's been processed and, and pre-done because then you're going to get this massive spike in insulin because all those carbohydrates are going to enter your bloodstream at once. Um, once I've um, had my, I have two meals of that lean protein and then I have one with three eggs and um, I stir in a little bit of, I just uh, have it post-workout, so when I get back from the gym, three eggs, make an omelette out of them. Sometimes I blend in a little bit of uh, powdered oats, stir that in, it makes a kind of um, pancake type uh, mixture. And I have that um, as like a savoury, I have it sprinkle it with a bit of um, hot chilli sauce or balsamic vinegar or something, maybe a bit of salad on top. Uh, that'd be my third protein meal. Then I normally do my cardio about an hour or two after that. Now it's getting pretty late. And my not last meal of the night is a bit of a treat every night. I have like uh, six spoonfuls of uh, natural yogurt with again, decent, uh, the bacteria in it are good for the gut biome. And then a sprinkling of fresh fruit in there, normally like grapes, strawberries, blueberries, stuff like that, just a handful. Um, and I mix a, uh, a scoop of whey in with that as well. Mixing the scoop of whey in, it makes that normally quite bland yogurt. A, it adds to the protein profile and B, it makes it taste awesome. I normally go with like a strawberries and cream way and, and you get a, like a strawberry yogurt vibe going on. So it makes a kind of sort of a dessert. It tastes kind of like a naughty dessert, but it's pretty healthy. So that is about it for diet. I do that every single day. Um, it gets real boring, but I look forward to Fridays when I can tuck into my cheat meal. And most of all, even though it, it's kind of boring, you start to get, um, you know, you get into it because you start getting really good results. And it's worth doing it because then when you see the results, you're like, yeah, damn, this works. So all these things about you can eat what you want, you can get away with eating two miles, bowls a day and whatever, those guys are never going to get the results. You know, the bottom line is getting into real good shape is hard work and it needs effort but it's not hard work that's horrid and grueling after the first couple of weeks you're into it and and that hard work becomes like second nature to you and pretty soon you won't know how it is to be you'll miss that hard work if you need to do it because that actually becomes to um define something about you, you know you're like proud that you're training that hard you're proud you've got all that time training under your belt that you've eaten really well and you've strengthened your mind and your body um, because a lot of this strengthens your mind as well you know once you start achieving these goals and you start getting somewhere not only will your body harden and tone but your your mind will harden and tone as well and you will start to feel real confident real quick and the more confident you feel the easier this stuff is to do when it comes to the point where um, you know that you are so confident and so happy with yourself that you actually don't want to go um, any other way than to you know do, do a decent diet and, and eat healthily. Uh, vitamin and supplement wise I, I take a couple of vitamin C tablets a day, a multivitamin tablet a day and three really high quality fish oil and you should I think it's the EPA factor I aim for about a thousand milligrams of the EPA I think it is um, there's there's two uh, different substances in the fish oil. I think it's EPA, maybe DHA. But I always look to try and get a thousand milligrams of the EPA because again, there's uh, many medical studies that back up the um, the health claims um, that that is a great benefit to the arterial system, etc. Right. I hope that's been of some use, guys. Like I said, I'll splice in some some footage, and if you're a middle-aged person. 
um, or older than middle-aged and you want to get in shape I hope this gives you some motivation that you can achieve what you want to achieve and uh, if you've got any issues give us a shout happy to answer questions on the email you'll find that in the uh, the bio link take care bye bye